Hi, Misha here, and this is actually my most recent AK, I believe. This is the quote-unquote Asian contract build from Atlantic. They have original Asian parts on a U.S. receiver and barrel, but have to be kind of custom designed and specced out for these parts. And, uh, pretty cool. I really didn't mean to pick one up, but... Why not? Incidentally and completely unrelated, we're going to talk about North Korean Type 68s. Because... Well, I've got my gun and one mag that goes with it here. This week, a viewer sent me this. The Type 68 bayonet, which is a pretty unique combo of milled AK-47 and stamped AKM much unlike, much like, excuse me, a North Korean Type 68. And coincidentally, this Asian contract gun sure looks a lot like it. Funny that. So, wanted to acknowledge that, show it in the video. Um, wanted to give, you know, shout out to uh, Robert there and appreciation for the donation. Uh, um, offered to trade him stuff and he said he's been a freeloader on the channel, hadn't done Patreon or you know, anything like that for a while, so since he's uh, just watched the channel for years, this is his contribution. Still yet, if I see something that might fit his stuff, uh, I'm going to send it to him. But if you would like to help out on Patreon, check out the link. If you'd like to just help us out otherwise, uh, sharing, subscribing, help out a lot too. But with that, let's just talk a little bit briefly about these unique bayonets. Sorry for the background stuff. You can tell once 5 o'clock rolls around. So this is the underfolding version. Still locks up quite tight. And this is a unique style of stock. The North Korean production started with the Type 58, which was a licensed AK Type 3 gun. Fixed and underfolding stock versions made it two arsenals uh, factory 61 and 65 if memory serves in North Korea and uh, they would build uh, over three quarters of a billion of those over about a decade and they would export them uh, to several nations including Cuba and places in Africa things like that but those were the mill guns when it was time to cheapen production up and modernize a bit for the stamped guns, they did not have production licensing or blueprints or any of that. That's why the Type 68, while still on a stamped receiver, it's kind of its own thing. And there's a little bit of Chinese influence in there too, but mostly kind of Russian. Still have a lot of stuff from the original mill AK, slab hand guards, wood grip, 800 meter rear sight. The barrel, while it has a thinner profile, like an AKM, the uh, channels and stuff back here, it, they beef up a bit like an AK Type 3. It's a, it's, a, it's a unique barrel profile. And as you see here, the sling mount is still up here. Even on the stamped version of this gun, the swivel's kind of welded back here. 45 degree gas block. And you kind of look around and everything is simplified. Now, one thing is there's a lot of machined parts still. There's not an investment cast. You notice kind of the odd shaped gas block and the very simplified front sight, muzzle nut, and kind of a unique trigger guard with a rib. They still used a double hook trigger instead of AKM single. And the stock is stamped, but it's swept down like an AKM. And it only locks on the left side. And it has the clicky butt plate. So basically, it's an AKS Type 3 
stock, but made from stampings, and it doesn't even have a real rear trunnion as such. It's kind of stamped pieces. We've done full videos, check them out. And the standard mag was 30 rounds, but this mag is a 20 rounder, often seen with contracts. You also see with the contract 68s, a rib top cover, although smooth, was also used a lot. And you'll have a couple of different types of selector markings. You could have Korean style, if they're for domestic use, or kind of a infinity sign in numerical style for export because North Korea, well, they needed money. They had labor. They had some resources, including uh, what we call chu wood, which is a katapa wood. And they exported these. But just as the gun is an interesting amalgamation and kind of their own thing, so too was its bayonet. And that's why I wanted one so badly. But unfortunately, these are hard to come by in good shape. And when found, are kind of commanding crazy money these days. So what do we have here? I grabbed a traditional AK Type 3 bayonet. Sometimes called the 6H2 or the 6X2. And this was developed from the SVT-40 in World War II and kind of retrofit to the milled gun. I believe this one is East German, but I could be wrong. You know, just a long, thin, grooved blade, ring, and then of course, ring back here, and then it locked with the lever here under the front sight base. And typically, synthetic grips, but some of these, like the Chinese, might have wood. And here, You'll see a big similarity. The scabbard is almost the same, but it's actually a little bit lighter weight steel. And we have a canvas style hanger. This is the green variation. A tan one has also been seen, especially the ones that came out of Cuba. Some of these came back from Granada. And you look at the blade, and it's a very similar profile, but notice the kind of bowy or hooked point there. Very similar grips, but comparing these, you can see the different, that's my things here, latching systems. And that goes back here. Because the Type 68 has an AKM style lug under the gas block as opposed to an AK style under the front sight base. So from the AK, this is just uh, East German, I believe again. It's actually a transitional or combo style with this type of scabbard. Notice it has the hook on the blade but it's a much wider blade with saw teeth and all that. And then this big grip, pommel, and the AKM button. So, and it seems like this was more taken from the second variation with the steel butt of the AKM grip versus this, but I just happened to grab this one. But I think the combination of blades is particularly cool of adding a little bit of that hook so it's not just a combo grip it's combo blade but let's see how it fits yeah goes on actually fits quite well side to side but no front to back movement Pretty neat. I'm curious if this one will fit. I'm thinking maybe not because of the larger pommel, but maybe so. Goes on, but 
yeah, it, Im it impacts. If you look here, the button can't quite go. So you would need a second variation AKM bayonet because otherwise it just doesn't latch. But that's not uncommon. That big bulbous grip on the first pattern AKM doesn't fit a lot of guns. And of course, country to country, there you go. It's, and as far as I know, the Type 68 bayonet will fit most other AK types. Most. But it is kind of its own hybrid thing. And I think that's cool. What do you think? So, once more, great appreciation to Robert. I have wanted one of these for a while, but just haven't found one until now. He just happened to mention he thought he had one. He doesn't have a North Korean gun, so he didn't have the gun for it. And we were doing some other stuff. And I do, I do enjoy collecting bayonets. I do. It's kind of neat because it's actually got a actual button closure on this as opposed to and yeah that scabbard is noticeably lighter and that's something I've noticed uh, with a lot of the North Korean components is it just seems like the steel especially stamp steel is just a little bit lighter not Probably something you could even measure, but just has more of a like tin can feel. That's my theory as to why this trigger guard has the ribbing for strength. And, and like this top cover feels a little bit thinner. Of course, mine's been gooped in the past long ago in service, but it's a matching cover. I might try to knock those things out one day, but they don't in fact function. It works just fine. And while I did not buy this as a shooter, it's nice to know it does shoot. But I will say, people have asked about these. I do like this build. The problem is you've got a non-standard barrel, a non-standard receiver, and then you're using well-used, oftentimes mismatched number parts. This would not be a good beginner AK build. Not to mention, of course, the cost of the kits and the relative rarity. I'm not saying you can't do it. But, yeah, I'd, I would, um, you know, be cautious there if I were you. You know, do what you want. I should mention that some parts of this stock are machined. Some are stamped just before someone does the, well, actually, yeah, I know. But it is a cool variation. And again, not one I was just super wanting to get, but once they came out and I saw how different they were, it really does add to the collection, and I don't have a lot of Asian contract style guns because so many of those variations have just never been available in America parts kit or otherwise but What do you think? Do you like the kind of battlefield been there done that look I sure do or do you like guns that are just brand new? But either way, I think we all like gifts and I Wanted to do this video for it now. I've got a question for you anyone want to do like a big AK bayonet video kind of having the urge to do it but let me know if there's any interest again if you'd like to help support us check out patreon check out other videos that we've done in the past on the kits and the builds hope everyone's having a good start to their fall at least post labor day and uh, check out more videos coming from the cabin as we get into the nice weather season and pretty leaves and all that this is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.